Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and this video is all about build plates for the Bamboo Lab H2D, and they're specifically build plates from BQ. They reached out recently and asked me if I wanted to check out some of their build plates for the Bamboo Lab H2D. I said, sure, and would tell you what my experience has been like with them. It's not the first time I've experienced some of BQ's build plates. My go-to for the Bamboo Lab A1 is definitely their Cryogrip Frostbite build plate. I did a video on that a while ago, and that is still my go-to build plate that I use all the time. I primarily just print PLA and PETG on the A1, and that build plate has just worked out phenomenally well. If you're not familiar with the Frostbite and Glacier plates from BQ, it's a part of their Cryo Grip series. And basically the whole thing about them is they have this very distinctive blue color. And the great thing is when you use these, your bed temperatures can be much lower. So in the case of PLA, your bed temperature can be as low as 30 degrees as opposed to something like 55 or 60 degrees Celsius that you would normally do with a typical PEI coated build plate. And if you're printing PETG, your bed temperatures can be as low as 50 degrees Celsius. And the range here is between 50 and 70 for PETG. So if you're sort of energy conscious and you want to use less power to heat your bed in order to print PLA or PETG, then these cryo grip frostbite plates are some of the best plates in the business that you can buy right now, and they're very reliable. So like I said, I've been using this on the A1 a lot and I just still really, really like it. But then they also have the Glacier build plate, which is a lighter blue than the Frostbite one. But this one is primarily used for more engineering materials. Unlike the uh, Frostbite plate that's a little bit more textured, this particular plate is more smooth. And they even gave you like this little sheet so that you can see the differences between them. Basically, you can use PLA or PETG on either of these plates, whether it's going to be the frostbite or the glacier, but the glacier plate also gives you some better adhesion properties for materials like nylon and ABS, for example. It doesn't have as strong of a grip for PLA and PETG as the frostbite plate, but it is better for like a more well-rounded overall experience with it. But, you know, it's not always sunshine and rainbows when it comes to using these plates. I actually did learn something that I did not know before, and that is the Bamboo Lab H2D actually can detect its own bill plates, meaning first party bill plates that Bamboo Lab provides. So when you want to use something like the Cryo Grip Frostbite plate, you put it on the printer, you go to start a print, it's going to give you an error and it's going to say something along the lines of it can't detect the build plate mark. Marker, for example, I'll put something on the screen so that you can see it and it won't let you continue unless you tell it that, hey, ignore this warning and just continue to print as you normally would. Um, and when you do that, everything works out just fine. But the fact that you can't just get this plate on the printer and just start it without having to go and uh, select that option to ignore the warning, that is a bit of a bummer. And I didn't know that Bamboo Lab even did things like that when it comes to build plates on the H. 2D. So just kind of be aware of that. Now, this other plate that I tried out is the pyro grip plate. All right. So you got the cryo grip and you have the pyro grip. Now, this just looks like a standard PEI build plate that you get with the printer. But the whole gimmick, I guess, behind this is that the hotter the pyro grip plate gets, the better adhesion you're going to get. And it's also one of those all arounder plates. So it'll be good for your regular PLAs, but it can be also good for your engineering materials that go up to high bed temperatures like nylon. Speaking of which, that's exactly what I tried to test. Now, here's what I tried to do first. Now, I printed these parts for the TIE Fighter from uh, one of the Galactic Armory's Star Wars kit cards, and I tried to print it in PLA. But when I did that, some parts of it warped off the bed, the parts that just sort of connect to the wing. I thought that maybe that was because my build plate wasn't clean when I first did it. So this time around, when I used the pyro grip plate, I used nylon and made sure that the plate was clean, and I just wanted to print it 
regularly without any glue to see if that 100 degree bed temperature was going to hold these parts in place. And here's what they look like. I got a couple of different sets of them. So here was the first set. I didn't let these finish because they did in fact warp on the build plate. A couple of these sides here, you know, they just sort of curled up. These are quite skinny. There's not a ton of surface area. And when you look on the back of these, you see that there's like a little hollowed out spot because it attaches to something else. So these just sort of curled up on the build plate. So when that happened, I decided to go back and reprint it again. But this time I used the painted on brim function in Bamboo Studio to get some mouse ear brims underneath each of these skinnier parts and hoping that maybe the strength of the pio grip plate combined with uh, those brims would keep these parts down and well that didn't happen but it did a better job at keeping all of these anchor points on the bed than doing it without the brim but it still did not turn out perfectly as you can kind of see it's the shorter end this part curled up and then this part over here curled up as well. Better than before, but it still curled up. The pyro grip did not grip it. But to be fair, when it comes to the pyro grip, it does say that you need to use glue. They do recommend that when you're using nylon with it. But I tried to not use the glue one more time and I decided to print out this filament tag for nylon that I found on uh, printables and you know this is just a typical square and this actually did print just fine without warping this was a really quick print took only maybe about 10 minutes or so to print so I didn't have any problem with this particular little square staying on the bed if it were a longer print maybe things would have gone uh, left but that didn't happen the pyro grip plate without glue managed to print this little part that didn't take long to print without any warping so at that point, I decided to keep my streak alive and I wanted to print out this little feeding tray for a bird feeder. And this is just a little square, just like this was it's the same shape. But, you know, this takes longer to print also out of nylon. And unfortunately, this one also warped. Nylon is pretty difficult to print. Even within a heated chamber with the hot bill plate, it can still be difficult to print. And I dried this for like 12 hours at 80 degrees Celsius, and it still managed to warp just on the side. So it's not very even. So at that point, I decided to grab myself some glue stick. I applied the glue stick, tried to print out this piece again in nylon on the pyro grip plate. And that is when things finally went right. This feed box managed to print perfectly. It is not uneven. It is not wobbling on any side and managed to stay on the bed nice and flat with the help of glue, just like BQ says you should use when you're using nylon on this pyro grip plate. So that's something that you should be aware of. Speaking of which, when I kept the pyro grip plate on, I decided to print with some PETG carbon fiber to print the bird feeder that goes along with this. And it printed out perfectly fine on the very first try. So this is my latest bird feeder that I am going to hang up. And this is the feed box that goes with it that you can just put on the inside and it fits. There we go. Fits perfectly fine right there in the middle. So hopefully this will be uh, hopefully a little better of a squirrel deterrent for me. But uh, yeah, Pyro Grip held up its end of the bargain when it comes to PETG and nylon if you use glue. Another plate that I wanted to try out, and this has been like the most difficult plate to uh, work with, is this plate right here. Now, this is one of those like PEO uh, build plates that is smooth on both sides and on both sides you've got these patterns it's got like this diamond pattern here and then on the other side is more like a like a carbon fiber kind of a pattern I've used plates like this in the past on different printers and the biggest problem that I have with these plates is that adhesion is usually not very good when you don't assist it and um I experienced the same thing with this plate. I wanted to print some 
coasters to take advantage of this design on the build plate, especially like this diamond design. The first first coaster that I tried to print, um, the first layer didn't go down all that smooth. I saw some areas starting to come up. So I canceled that print and then I applied some clear glue to this plate and I tried it again. And that's when I had more success, but it's still not the best. I wanted to print out these um, Bender Brow coasters, Bender from Futurama. And when you have the image face down on the plate, then it takes the pattern that's on the plate and it applies it to the print. And for this first one, it didn't come out all that good as far as just the overall print quality of the image goes. This was a, a community altered version of this and I thought it might be better but when it didn't turn out all that good I decided to use the creator's original settings and when I did that then it turned out better as far as being able to read the words but it's still not like all that great but the biggest thing is as it comes to like this build plate here is that adhesion was still a little bit of a problem because right here you can kind of see where the layers were kind of messed up they didn't lay down as smooth as they normally would if this was like a pei plate or if it was like one of those uh if it was one of the cryo grip plates so it was still having some difficulty with that i and i just really like how the pattern shows up on things like these coasters but as far as getting the adhesion to be reliable that's been the biggest struggle i decided to print out a different coaster as well and this one is just a deadpool with uh it facing flat down on the plate again to get that design pattern and you know this one didn't turn out all that great as well it's okay but you know there's still some there's some it's like extrusion issues around some parts you know is it, it just doesn't look as good as other coasters that i've done on regular build plates for example here is a teenage mutant ninja turtles um coaster that i printed a while ago on the bamboo lab h2d and this just turned out perfectly you know as you can see from front to back it looks absolutely perfect. There's no weird artifact thing or there's no filament curling up in one area. Things that look like extrusion issues or it, like it's just not there. But on these coasters, only using this particular plate did those issues just sort of pop up. So I got a love-hate relationship with plates like this. Like I said, it's, it's not just this one. I have another plate that does the same thing on other printers. It's just adhesion is just not my friend when it comes to these. So what I think about these plates overall, I think that the greatest plates that they make is definitely the cryo grip plates. For me, the frostbite, because like I said, mostly just do PLA and PETG and it does a wonderful job at keeping that temperature nice and low while providing a really solid grip on your prints and for the time that I've been using it on the A1 nothing the coating is not coming off it hasn't been stripped off I know some people have had issues with that but fortunately I haven't had that issue so I'm going to continue to use the frostbite build plate as my primary build plate for the bamboo lab h2d as far as the cryo as far as the pyro grip build plate goes I mean now, the Pyro Grip build plate, I think, is a little bit harder of a sell because you're not really changing anything as far as your normal procedures when it comes to printing. At least with the Cryo Grip plate, you know that you're printing at a lower bed temperature, and that in and of itself could be beneficial enough, that and the really good grip that it has. But with the Pyro Grip plate, you're still going to be using the same bed temperatures, and you still have to use glue if you're going to be using things like nylon in order to make sure that it holds so what really are you doing that's all that much different than using a regular pei build plate that already comes with the printer maybe if you run some sort of test to see how much greater the adhesion is when you print the same part using a pei plate a regular plate in the pyro grip plate but to me as long as the part stays where it's supposed to be and nothing is warping off of it does it really matter if it takes a little bit more force to rip it off the build plate for the pyro grip 
as opposed to just a regular texture PEI plate. As long as it's still there, that's the only thing that matters. Because when you're done, you're just going to be flexing the plate and popping it off anyway. And that should just be just as easy. Um, whether it's for the pyro grip plate that loses adhesion once it cools down or your regular PEI plate that does the exact same thing. So I think that the pyro grip plate is a little bit of a harder sell, but the cryo grip plates, yes, those are good. And as far as this uh, fancy pattern plate. Uh, if you got some patience, you can definitely work with this. I would just recommend like some clue glare stick or some type of spray adhesive to uh, make it more reliable. But um, it's really more for decorative purposes anyway. So if you're a more functional print person, then I don't think you would need to have that kind of pattern on your prints anyway. And you would just rather it be reliably printed instead. And one more thing about the pyro grip plate that I do think is good to know is that it actually has like these markings right here that the H2D will be able to recognize and it won't give you those same errors about uh, the build plate marker not being found or not being identified that you would get with the frostbite plate. So, you know, these are actually useful. So you don't have to worry about checking on the printer when it throws an error and you'll have to clear the error. You don't have to worry about that. However, with this plate that has the design on it i did get an error that was telling me that the plate was misaligned even though it wasn't so it didn't tell me that it couldn't detect the plate it was telling me that the plate was misaligned and i just had to clear that error and then it would continue i don't know why it was doing that i don't know if it has anything to do with the reflective quality of this or the design pattern but it did sort of trick up the h2d so that's something you should know about this plate as well so if you're interested in any of these plates, I'll just leave links in the description. You can go there and you can see what the current price is for each of these plates. You know how things are these days. The prices for stuff can just go up. It can go down and you really don't know what's going on. Right. So go ahead and do that if you're interested in it. And just know that uh, the cryo grip plate, especially the frostbite plate, has my definite recommendation for either your bamboo lab printer or any other printer that you have that has the exact same build size.